Hey everyone, Matt Geller here, Dr. Matt Geller with Covalent Careers and New Grad Optometry. I'm here with Kevin Wilhelm, the president and co-founder of Marketing for UCPs. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. So um, I heard you were telling me before that you guys are helping to bring down cost per lead at practices, new patients, 15 bucks, and then obviously they convert. But ultimately, if they do, that's a great ROI for a practice. Tell me about that. Yeah, so we, we've really harnessed in the power of digital marketing primarily to do this. And we kind of evaluate the entire patient journey. And there's a lot of different areas that you can control in getting a cost per lead as low as 15. And we've seen some lower, but that's about average of what we're seeing. So it really starts with you know, looking at your website and making sure that it's uh, more than just a website. It's actually a sales tool. So one thing that we are constantly talking about and preaching is treat your website as if it is your best salesperson that you have. Because your website never calls in sick, never takes a day off, it always says what you want it to say, and evaluate the effectiveness of your website just like you would any salesperson in your business. Because if you have 100 people that come into your website today, how many are actually doing what you want them to do, which is a phone call, a form submission, an online appointment? Um, how many are doing what you want? And we call that a conversion rate. And so when that happens, then we say that's a, that's a lead. So we kind of backtrack and say, how much is it costing us to drive traffic into the website? How effective is it at turning that traffic into leads? And that's kind of how we back it up and say, what's our cost per lead? So when we say $15, um, and you look at a website that might convert at 10%, one out of 10 people will actually pick the phone up and call. Then we look and say that the traffic coming into the website should cost between a dollar and $2. And if you can generate traffic for a dollar to $2, a website converts at 10%, you're generating leads at, you know, at that, uh, that $15 mark. When you guys come in and help practices do this, I mean, it, it sounds like, I, I know that this is missing in, in the profession overall. Not a lot of practices are doing marketing properly. How much more successful are the practices that are doing this with you guys? Well, the ones that have never done digital marketing before whatsoever, they typically see a, a quite a big lift right off, the, right off the bat because they're opening up their market to people that have never, like they've just never tried this before. So if you think about kind of the basics of digital marketing, somebody goes on a search engine like Google and they're searching for an eye doctor, an optometrist, an eye exam. Uh, they're even searching for the brands that you carry, whether it's contact lenses or frames. And if you haven't been marketing online, you weren't showing up before. And so if you, if you weren't showing up, you're relying on all the traditional ways of growing your business, which is word of mouth. It's maybe through some social media that you're doing, but it's direct mail, it's signage. When you add the element of digital marketing in, what you've done is put your listing and your ad up on the top of a search engine. Now all those thousands of people that are looking for you have an opportunity to actually see you, choose you, and come in where if you weren't doing it, you had no opportunity before. So for a practice that doesn't really know where to begin or what to do or where to start or, you know, perhaps there's a whole menu of things you guys can do for them, how do they know what to pick? Do you come in and kind of do an analysis first? Or not even necessarily what you guys do, but how should this be done? How should it be thought of? Do you do like a doctor would do it, your diagnosis and treatment? What is that process like? How should practices think of doing digital marketing properly? Any kind of goal or structure, you have to know where you want to go, but you also have to know where you're starting from. So I kind of treat you know, marketing almost like a trip, like your summer vacation. So you know where you want to go, but where am I starting from? So if you really even think about going on, on Google Maps and trying to figure out how far a distance is, you have to know where your starting point is. So the first step is really evaluating where are you today? And so many people are unaware of where they rank online, who their actual competitors are online. When we talk to practices and ask them, like, who are your competitors, and they give us three or four, when we look online, those aren't the same four. Those might be four that they, they, they kind of know day to day, but they're unaware of all of the larger companies and online retailers and even just independents that aren't in that general vicinity or knowledge. And so understanding where do you rank? So when you, someone searches for optometrist near me or optometrist in my area or eye doctor, where are you ranking? That's the first thing is find out where, where you are and then you say, okay, where do I have to be? What's the opportunity that's in front of me? And you know, Google, Google has a stat that we've, we've come here a couple times and it grows every year, but right now 80 million searches a month are happening 
on Google in vision-related searches. And if we break that down to a practice level, we have found that around every independent practice, there's about 5,000 searches that are happening per month for your products, services, and brands that you are offering right now. So 5,000 people that don't know who to deal with are doing a search on a search engine in your area. How many of these people are actually choosing you and how how much bigger could your business be if you were out in front of them saying the right thing and attracting those, those customers and patients into your business? Yeah, I guess it's frustrating because I see a lot of, and, 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 I, and I'm guilty of it too when I was practicing, it's, it's this complaint of it's hard to get patients and the profession is changing and I'm not generating the revenue and I have to work so much harder. If, you know, And in a way, if you're not doing these marketing steps properly, you kind of haven't checked all the boxes to where you get that liberty to complain. It sounds like you have to be working on these things very diligently. It's not something you could just set and forget. You have a physical location and therefore patients will come. You've got to work at it. Where should the most basic practice begin? What should they focus on as the smallest element if they want to make one change today? I understand that you have to know, you know, where they're starting, what they've done and haven't done, but what's the, what's the one small thing they could do to get a big win today? Oh, there's so many. Um, if we're talking about digital marketing specifically, I would say we have to start and look at your website. Something that is simple as how fast does your website load? Right now, Google is evaluating how quick and how, how speedy a website loads as a huge indicator as to how high ranked you are on a mobile search. You can actually go to a, 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 this URL, it's testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com and you can put your URL into that tool and it will spit out and evaluate how fast your website loads on like a 4G network and it will tell you how much traffic it's estimated you're losing just because your site's loading too long. And certain things that, that cause a site to load too long are really, really big images. Like when somebody gets custom photography done in a practice, which we highly recommend, but the image is for like print. It's for posters or banners. or um, So you can shrink and condense that, that image size. Got it. Having like sliders where there's three, four, or five images, what's happening is when the site loads, it has to load all five images, which slows it down. So there's so many things that slow down a website that maybe weren't important 18 months ago or two years ago, but people that have their site and haven't updated and haven't kept on in touch with that would have no idea that what was best practice two years ago is totally changed today and how consumers are searching for you is different and how Google's evaluating your website's different. And so what's ended up happening is your site that could have been working great for you two years ago is actually hurting you because now you're showing up further and further down a search engine result page. And that's something that just by speeding up your site, you could see a lift in traffic. Got it. Is there any marketing that folks should just avoid? Or is that really not the case? I mean, everything is, you know, you have to look at it with a custom approach. Yeah, it should be case by case. You know, what we hear a lot is, is people really kind of put down print directories and yellow pages and stuff like that. And the way I look at it is, hey, if it's bringing in a lead, if it's bringing in a new patient profitably, there's no reason that you shouldn't do it. So some are more effective than others, and I truly believe that Google advertising is the most effective. Social media can absolutely be, be cost effective. But even something like direct mail, if the strategy is right, if the targeting is right, if the, if the, if, if the message and the offer is right, you can bring in new patients profitably. And really what it should come down to is, what is your average patient worth to you? How much are you willing to acquire that patient for? And evaluate all your marketing on that line. So if this medium brings in a new patient profitably, you should do it. If it's unprofitable, if it's costing you too much money, meaning that you know, it might cost you $100, $150 to acquire a patient, but you're only earning $150 or $180 from that patient, it actually costs you more money to acquire them than it does the money that you're servicing them. So that's when you evaluate and say, you know what, I probably don't want to do that anymore. I need to really look at what's working profitably. So that's what we look at is, is we evaluate across the board what's profitable, what's not, and then we reallocate money and say, let's put all your money into the most profitable avenues and let's spend less on the ones that aren't. What are your thoughts on just, you know, Google Ads is a great, you know, uh, avenue to get, to get uh, using the CPC idea of, of acquiring traffic that way. Facebook ads, YouTube ads, what are your thoughts on some of the other mediums out there, other channels rather, um, and advertising on those? Is that essential? Is that icing on the cake? 
Yeah, so those three that you mentioned, we have the Google ads, which are the search ads that show up. To me, those are the most cost effective when it's done properly. And by done properly, it means you're bidding the right amount. You have the right keywords in there, in the right geographies. All that has to be set up. But when you, when you have all that together, that's where we're seeing kind of $15 cost per leads. Facebook, Instagram, those are great to visually show your practice and you can reach the right demo, uh, demographics. And YouTube is amazing right now because you get the benefit of TV advertising, which is two senses. You have visual and you have auditory, so you can get your message across in two different ways. Uh, but you're only paying when somebody actually watches the whole video. So in those five second pre-rolls, and that's kind of the advertising model, if somebody skips uh, after those five seconds and they skip the ad, it doesn't cost the advertiser anything. You actually have to watch the whole video before it costs anything. So from a cost effective point of view, absolutely YouTube works and you can target your communities and the right demographics. So if you're looking to bring in more millennials on a sunglass sale or you're looking to bring in more families with children, you can actually input those demographic key indicators into a YouTube campaign, show a video that's attracting families and say I have a budget of you know, three, four, five hundred dollars and I want to reach thousands of families within a driving threshold of my area and YouTube will take care of that for you. So those to me are like the key ways that you can grow your practice. And then once that's really taken care of and you're generating impressions and clicks and views and, and conversions, then you add on other areas of advertising, you know, like a direct mail campaign or radio or things like that. But really we recommend getting the digital taken care of first. What should marketing on a budget look like, say for a new practice owner, a cold start, new OD versus someone who's been out for quite a while and has a budget, has the cash flow? Um, what does the marketing look like, just from a high level, not even necessarily how to do it, but what channel should they be in? Should it be more organic social media, writing blogs versus spending on you know, Google ads and things like that? Because, go ahead, yeah. So that, that, that's an amazing question. When you are starting out, you don't have the luxury of cash flow. You don't have the luxury of having that, that money that you can invest in marketing. So what I highly recommend is when you're starting out of practice and you're budgeting for different things like equipment and your dispensary and all of that, earmark some for advertising so you can go out and acquire patients. But if you just don't have that, it's the hustle. You gotta get out and actually create social media content and you're out there blogging and you're out reaching out and creating kind of a social influence on Instagram. I think Instagram is an amazing way to grow your practice because you can showcase uh, your dispensary, you can showcase your, your optical, you can showcase the, the people, uh, you can showcase your inventory, your brands that you work with. And I have seen practices that have grown just by really focusing on Instagram. And while it's time consuming, it doesn't cost a lot. And so as a startup, I absolutely recommend doing that. And then also reaching out, picking the phone up and calling the, uh, the referral network and calling uh, you know, dentists in the area and general practitioners in the area and schools and just introducing yourself and sending them something in the mail to introduce who you are and trying to build that network. It's hard to advertise when you don't have that cash flow, but as you grow, start putting aside a budget to actually um, fuel your marketing through advertising. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, advice for a new practice that's getting started, you're going to really have to understand your practice analytics and metrics because if you, you, you can't haphazardly spend on marketing and not understand the ROI on it, you can waste a ton of money. So you have to understand your average revenue per patient, maybe your chair time, just your overall margins as broken down and as segmented as possible. That way you can say, hey, you know, like if I'm putting... $100, you know, $100 a month budget behind Facebook and 300 behind Google Ads, and you're able to see how many leads come in and track those leads ultimately into booked exams and then see what they're purchasing. But without that, you never know. The good part is, I suppose, if you know your analytics is that you can just pour on the fuel because you know I could literally put unlimited money into this and it will always generate me an ROI. Now, of course, there's a curve to that and there's a certain, you know, there's only so many patients that can come. Thoughts on that process, on, on making sure you have those analytics? What numbers must a practice know? Average revenue per patient, I would say, is probably one. Yeah, so internally, average revenue per patient. Um, also, your conversion rate in terms of if a phone call comes in, somebody wanting to book an exam with you, how effective are you at capturing that opportunity and, and actually getting them in? Software that, that you can use that's out there is if you go on Google and just type in like call tracking software, there's a few available. You can just take a, a quick line of code, input it in your website, and now you can track uh, the phone calls that actually come into your business right. through, through marketing. That connects to Google Analytics. 
And then through that, you can say, okay, I had 100 people come into my, my website today. Of that, let's say 18 phone calls came through. And through these softwares, you can actually listen and say, okay, and this is a great training opportunity, especially for, for operators that aren't in the front line. You can hear how the calls are being answered and, and being dealt with. Of those 18, maybe only 10 actually booked an eye exam. So if you spent $1,000 on generating the 18 phone calls and 10 came in, you're looking at a, a, a acquisition cost of $100. So now looking at what did those 10 people spend collectively and now what's my ROI. So definitely knowing what your average patient value is worth, knowing how effective you are on the phone and then understanding your website conversion rate are kind of three really key metrics that we look at. I think when practices start to look at their marketing and look at these numbers, practicing just becomes a lot more fun. Maybe I'm biased because I was a optometrist turned marketer uh, and so I got excited about it but I feel like when you get these metrics and you start to understand everything and you're like whoa watch this happen like we did this exact thing that was our plan and it worked they went right through and it only cost us that much and we made $300 on this patient net profit you know or gross gross profit really on that patient that was so cool it makes this stuff fun and it kind of keeps your fire going to do more and more I guess, do you see practices or your customers getting excited over the process? Yeah, absolutely. I think what's frustrating is when you don't know what works, that's where people shy away from marketing because you don't want to just throw money away, good money that you're working hard to earn to not have it generate anything. And so, you know, you kind of hear the old adage, half of all marketing works, you just don't know what half. And so I think that's why so many, even just medical professionals in general, shy away from investing marketing dollars because you're not sure what comes back. You're frustrated with it and you say, yeah, you know what, it's easier just to not do it. But when you track and you can see that by increasing a budget here, increasing there, and you can actually see the phone calls come in and you can listen to them and, and hear what people are asking for and knowing that you had no way of, of, of working with that patient other than advertising. And you can say, now I can help more patients and I can help more people and offer more care because I'm doing a better job marketing. That's when it becomes fun and they get more invested and more engaged. And the more engaged you become, the higher your, your ROI is because now you're kind of adding in that whole feedback loop of what's happening in my practice with what's happening marketing online. And that's where the synergies come together and you see, you see real growth in a business. What's your favorite, I'm not going to, it's kind of, what's your free, favorite free marketing avenue? Nothing's free because you have to put your time into it, uh, but what's your favorite, we well, are not saying paying a Google or paying a Facebook, what's your favorite organic marketing avenue? Yeah, so right now, especially in this industry, it would be Instagram. Instagram has the biggest opportunity, it's very aspirational. Um, I find that Facebook, while still the most popular, it is becoming sort of a complaining platform. You see a lot of negativity on Facebook, um, whereas Instagram, you just you don't have that. It's we're showing the best versions of ourselves, and we're showing a kind of what we are, what we want to be to the world. And so I find a lot of eye care consumers and patients go on Instagram, and they want to be inspired and aspired. And so they they latch on and they see beautiful imagery, and and you can really showcase your brand through an image, you kind of hear the, you know, a picture says a thousand words, and so you can tell your story through these great images, and all it takes is getting a, you know, a, a phone that you already have, having some, some editing software that costs you know, a few dollars, and then a little bit of time each day to take a quality photo, and a, and a strategy behind it to make sure that you're, you're actually linking it to the right conversations, and you're linking locally, and things like that, but I think Instagram is where, uh, where, you're, where your time is best spent, where no money is required. What do you think is the big, biggest project someone must handle? Like, what's the most, the, uh, if you ever read that book, Eat That Frog, what's the biggest frog they have to eat? I mean, the one that just, it's going to be, it's essential, they've got to get it done, it's a, it's a core piece of their business, but it's going to be, it's going to take some time. Doing this thing, getting this set up, it's going to take time, it's going to take effort, it'll be a little bit tedious, but it's worth it. I think I know what you're going to say. No, I'm actually going to go... I'm gonna go a little different. So instead of even thinking digital marketing, I think my answer here is evaluating what you're doing in the practice. When you look at our businesses today, uh, there's a lot of disruption. There's a lot of other opportunities for patients to choose. So what I really look at, the, the big frog they have, to, they have to eat is, what are you doing differently in your practice that doesn't require advertising. So there's a, there's a saying that advertising is the business tax of being unremarkable. So the more remarkable you are, 
the more people are just going to want to talk to you or want to tell your story. So what are you doing in your business that makes your patients, your consumers, drive by six other optometrists or six other um, optical stores and choose you? So are you carrying lines that no one else are carrying? Are you offering an eye exam that is state of the art? Are you have service that is tangibly different? Not just we offer great customer service because I think in today's world you have to, but what actually goes in a manual that is different about your customer service than everyone else so that when someone walks through your doors and experiences what you have, how is it tangibly different than every other option that's out there? And that's where the real work comes in because in order to really survive and thrive and, and grow a brand, you have to be unique, you have to have meaning, and you have to create an experience that is memorable and connects with your audience. So when you have all that, the advertising is easy because you're just telling people about that story. It's actually coming up with that story that's the hard work. I love that. Um, what, um, what are some really cool and you know, out in the wild marketing things that you've seen or even done for customers? Just specific examples. I know you don't want to give away the secret sauce, but uh, you know, what's, what's just a couple cool things, even from a broad, high-level perspective? Yeah, so I think, I think just getting really tactical and strategic in terms of marketing. Like, marketing is about hitting the right person at the right time with the right message. So for me, cool is making money. So what's cool is if the register actually, and people are walking in, so effective marketing is cool. So for me, I think it comes down to, you know, targeting the right neighborhoods around you and realizing, like, one of the things that we do is we pull uh, zip codes and addresses for, of your patients and plot them on a map. And so, okay, where are people willing to come from? And then analyzing that and saying, where do I want my patients to come from and then actually doing like some geographic targeting through digital marketing to that community and speaking directly to them and saying you know what 18 neighbors in your community are coming to us you should be next like just something that's different and out there that gets people thinking and saying okay strategically I want to target that community because that's the right kind of patient that I want to see so that to me is really the kind of cool and different type of, of marketing or ones that really work. But to do that, you have to understand your business, you have to understand your audience, and you have to understand where you want to go to actually achieve that. What about event marketing, holding events at your practice, having people come? I'm just thinking of what's not digital. You know, I feel like I was about to say, what's not digital marketing these yeah. days? What about non-digital avenues? Yeah, so I think events are great. I think if you can partner with other local community, like just other vendors, uh, whether it's a cupcake company or a fitness studio or just something where they bring their audience and you bring your audience, you can kind of do a collaboration. It has to be like-minded in your brand, but absolutely. But you have to give them a reason to want to come in. And that's part of that creating something different for your business. If you're about you know, whole body health, I've seen practices offer yoga at night. I've seen them have a smoothie bar. Uh, where it's a collaboration with a local you know, smoothie company or what have you. So that's where people think outside the box and they say, how can I combine my brand with like-minded community brands and really kind of all, you know, the high tide rises all ships. How can we work together and collaborate to actually do that and, and you know, cross-market and cross-promote with other businesses? So that's what I would say. If you're going to do events, great, but bring in people that are going to bring in your audience up as well. So not every practice has the time on their hands to do this themselves. Yep. How do they get in touch with you if they're too busy? A little bit real quick about your model and what you're doing specifically. Uh, and then, of course, how do they get in touch with you? Sure. So we are a full-service marketing agency uh, for eye care professionals. So we uh, generally work with the independent optometrists, and we do everything from kind of creating that brand, that brand look that the community needs to see, to building their website, to generating profitable leads through Google advertising and display and uh, YouTube and create videos. We do local thought leader content, so we're creating custom content for the practices, kind of custom content for them, by them. Um, and then we also handle like marketing automation and a little bit of e-commerce solutions. So we really want to be that one-stop shop for, for an independent optometrist that could use our, just needs marketing and we provide all that. They can learn more about us on our website, which is marketingforecps.com. So marketingforecps.com. And uh, they can just inquire about a demo. It takes about 20, 30 minutes and we walk them through the whole thing. So that's how they can do that. I think it's excellent. I'm a marketing junkie. I love it. Uh, so it's an exciting topic for me. But as I said, I think once you get into it, you, you'll find you're just totally, you're going to have a smile on your face. It's really fun to watch the process beginning to end. And it's fun to get the patient in your practice that you know you're going to be great for, and they're happier. So overall, everyone's happy. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Well, thanks for coming on. I really hey, appreciate you. it. And yeah. uh, looking forward to doing more with you down the line. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Yep.